What's up? Welcome back, everyone. In this episode, we're going to chat about the uh, the visualization for a sand pile. And I'm joined today by Kevin, who is uh, going to help us understand what this sand pile visualization is. We're going to write a little bit of JavaScript, look at uh, just look at the, the visualization. It's really cool. Kevin uh, spoke at a recent Dev Reno meetup about this sand pile visualization. I thought it was super, super neat, interesting, and kind of trippy. And I thought it'd be super fun to go through it. Uh, so Kevin, uh, do you want to like introduce yourself and kind of like maybe say what's up? Absolutely. I am Kevin Fredericks. I'm from Reno, Nevada, and I am a programmer and web developer here. And I've run a bunch of camps for kids. I've done Minecraft camps and uh, more strictly programming camps through Scratch and through processing. That's where I've uh, developed developed some tools to make um, really simple algorithms look fun. Yeah. Nice. Is so all, in in all of the camps? You, did you use processing or like P5JS for every single camp, or were there other tools you used? Actually, the, the most camps I ever did were in Mind Test, which is an open source copy of Minecraft that's just very well maintained. And so huh. we did it in voxels. Uh, it's a very logical thing to do in voxels because it um, relies on three dimensions to kind of make sense. Okay. Since everything's spread out, we'll get into it, but it's spread out on a 2D plane, but it has depth. The main thing that you're mutating mm -hmm. as the algorithm runs is the depth, so. Okay, cool. You wanna share your screen and we'll we'll jump into uh, some Please visualization do. stuff? Please do, I'll show some, some versions of the uh, completely warped and twisted versions of the sand pile. We'll jump, we'll jump ahead. Okay. I bet the first one that I have here. So let's open up a really. We're not actually seeing your screen though. Hold on a second. Not yet. We'll pull it up. Oh yeah. Am I sharing it? Might need to go into StreamYard and share it again. Let's see. Sure. I will pull it up once I get this loaded. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, processing and oh, so like yeah, like while we're. Uh, hanging out and waiting on that. One thing that we can take a look at is like this. Uh, oh, actually, no. There's there's your uh, there's your screen. Good. Yeah, yeah we'll get into that if we really want to get yeah. into the math. Yes, full <laughs> recursion. All right. Yeah. So here's the version one. This should be a very simple one. Okay. Oh, so simple that it's uh, aired. So <laughs> we'll do this one instead. Okay. So this is um, what's happening here is we have a two D matrix. And every single pixel on the screen has a value between zero and four here. Okay. And every time the frame runs, which this is running really slowly, uh, just because we're screen sharing, but it's actually kind of nice because you can see it grow. Mm -hmm. What's happening is that pink represents a pile that's three high. And I believe white is if it's too high and black is if it has one high. Okay. And um, so as the algorithm runs, it spreads the sand outward uh, in the north, south, east, and west. So uh, left, right, up, and down. Mm -hmm. And this one's just uh, showing the sand slowly moving away from the center because there's a really tall tower of sand in the very center. Mm hmm. So you, yeah, do, like, could you walk us through maybe like from the beginning, how this this whole thing works with the piles and toppling and avalanches and all of that stuff? Yeah, yeah. This so uh, if we look over and we run it from the very beginning and just see those first few frames, mm -hmm. imagine that there's a really tall tower of sand in the very center, and it's all just void in every direction. That's what black is. And every single frame, four pieces of sand fall to the sides. And then this gets repeated on every single pixel. So they topple and then they build up. And if they're four tall or more, they topple again. So that toppling will just repeat and repeat until the center pile of sand has just distributed all of these, well, we're calling them sand, they're integers, until that center one just topples all the way out until it's less than four, and then there's nothing more to spread out. I usually make this with a ludicrous number in the center, something like 
well, well more than a hundred thousand. So it just runs and I can stare at it. Nice. Okay. So this one here looks like maybe in your setup, it started at like uh, a million. Like yeah, a, I think yeah. I threw a million on there. Cool. And that doesn't really affect performance anymore because it's that only gets calculated once. Okay. Um, so looking at the topple algorithm, which is this is almost exactly the version of the algorithm that was used by um, Daniel Schiffman on his coding train series. Okay. Where he covered this and um, the only slightly confusing naming <laughs> convention here is next piles, uh -huh. which is just it's referring to the next version of the screen that we're going to render. Mm -hmm. This is a really nice and clear way to show it, um, even though performance-wise, it's a little bit slow because we're calculating every single pixel. Maybe we can, when we build it, we can do it in a way where we put in a guard clause or something like that to only calculate for the piles that we know are going to topple. That would probably be a lot better. <laughs> OK, interesting, interesting. Yeah. And so in this first chunk, we um, basically go through the whole uh, two-dimensional array. Mm -hmm. And right here, we have a few constants, or one really important constant, which is the max height, the max num mm -hmm. of, the, of each pile. And so we say, if it's less than, go ahead and just cruise on by. It still has to calculate something for every pixel, though. So it's just saying right here, it's underneath the topple threshold. So just render what's already there. Just put that into the next, the next um, render. But here, if it's greater than or equal than the max number, we do this very straightforward uh, set of if statements. Just distribute those, those uh, um, pile, that whole pile outward. OK. That pile gets reduced down to 0 because See right here, it's just getting getting that subtracted out, which I could I think this could just be max num right there. To be Got more it. to be more consistent. Okay. And then every so the the matrix is just like uh, a 2D array where mm -hmm. it stores integer values at every single position. And if the pile goes above max num, then you are you're just you're incrementing um the neighboring cells yes. by one and up to the edges of the okay cool and and like how do you determine the color like where is that you're sort of just so like that's in the draw uh in okay. the actual rendering so yeah i've i've used a <laughs> this this was for some kids and so um normally i wouldn't use a switch statement like this because it makes just doesn't, it isn't so easy to reason about, but for kids, this is great. They love seeing that repetition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so here we get a color set up, and this is going through the sand pile, uh, the entire or 2D array. Mm -hmm. It's saying if that value is zero, use this color. If it's one, use this color. And these are RGB values. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, base color is just 255 to be maxed out. Mm hmm. Two, three, and then finally four. Like, cool. for example, if we really wanted to make this adaptive and we wanted to be able to topple at a height of eight or nine, mm -hmm. this would be mm -hmm. a really terrible solution. But um, in the case where we're going to lock it at four, this is terse enough to be to work. Yep. Cool. All right. Okay. So we get number equals three. It looks like I did something goofy here to probably hack something into place. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah, using, make the, it cool. using the dimensional or like it's a two it's a two D array, but you're like reaching into it. Yes, as if it was one D or something. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing there. Uh, that's because of the way processing renders. Okay, it renders um, the screen, the pixels array is all mm -hmm. the pixels on the screen, mm -hmm. and so you have to actually do this in processing because it just takes every line and makes that a number from, say, say you had a 10 by 10 array or mm -hmm. a 10 by 10 screen. It would be 100 pixels with breakpoints at all the rows. Got it, got it, got it. OK. That's kind of old school, but it's uh, it's probably the simplest way, because it is how scan lines have always worked. So it's pretty accurate. Cool. And then at the end, we update the pixels. And then there's not that much more. And when we run, we just topple. And I take something into this topple. 
this is me hacking stuff where I can <laughs> okay. change that max number every frame. <laughs> okay. So here's something crazy. This is just a little primer for like, when you can really have fun. What if every frame we do the ceiling of <laughs> a random yep. number between two and six? Yeah. Yeah, that's, I think that's like where it gets really exciting is when you're just like throwing in randomness to make it kind of like be yeah. more sort of mushy. This is, this is going to be extremely slow. But yeah, look at how different that is. This is every single frame, it's calculating a new random number yeah. and then creating more of a mandala effect out of it. Yeah, but it's still symmetrical. So that's cool because you're toppling like this, even though it's random, it's like the same amount in every direction. Like the other thing I was thinking was like you could topple randomly in every, like also random per direction or something. Like, you yeah, I mean? yeah, you definitely, you do that. That would definitely vol violate our solid principles here. But um, <laughs> given that there are none in this particular code, um, yeah, you could do that right up here when you were deciding what number to put in. Yeah. I'm not going to do that right now because um, that would cool. be a fun discovery to make later. Okay. Should we, should, so processing, I thought processing was JavaScript, but that does not. This is, this is the Java flavor. The Java flavor. Okay. Yeah. It was originally Java, um, based processing is from like 2001. Okay. So they, um, just kind of, they rewrapped it because, because it's more or less a wrapper for Java. You're mm -hmm. not writing. I don't think you can use the whole standard library in processing for Java. Okay. So as um, ES6 came out, they just rewrapped it and made it so that you could use all the same functions and everything worked the same in this version, which is P5.js. I have cool. had issues running that in the uh, desktop version. Okay. Like it says okay. you can just switch over, but um, I just use the web editor and take the performance hit because it's so much simpler. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Cool. Should we right, so uh, try to build one? Let's do it. Yeah, I'll, we'll we'll step through it. Um, the okay. steps are one, two, three. There, build a cool. 2D array. Um, uh, well, uh, setup is build an enormously uh, large column of sand in the center of a 2D array. Okay. And then on every single frame, um, perform the algorithm where you take one out of anything that's over four, any mm -hmm. single pixel that's over four, and distribute it. And then okay. just run that every frame. OK. So uh, how do I, I just like click play, and then something should show up here? OK. So yeah, cool. if, you, if you're following along at home and you want to like mess around with this, you can go to editor.p5js.org, and then you can, you can play around. I guess we can also drop a link. Can we drop a link to this specific thing? Do we have to log in, or? Um, you can. It? You can actually go ahead and build it, and then, and then create an account afterwards and save it. OK. So let's see. If it's just gonna that'll, okay. that'll so you see at the top it gave you boat net lasagna. Okay. That's your that's your name. And then once you save it, yes, it does create a share link. Okay. And how do you save it? Uh, file, file save. Okay. Imagine that. All right. So I'm gonna drop that in the comments if people want to follow along or play around with us. Um, and then in terms of in uh, okay, so going back to your your steps here, we're gonna like create a pile of sand in the middle. And then we're going to write like a topple function or something. Yeah. Yeah. The, the two D array is such a, a straightforward step that um, you'll do that inside of setup. Um, okay. Setup is uh, basically like init uh, for for most other game like engines and things like that. And then okay. draw is a function that gets run every single frame. Okay. And in the in the draw function. Like we'll we'll want re reference to whatever like matrix we come up with. I'm assuming. So, yeah, you could store it. Um, you could mutate it um, in the topple function if you want, because you'll likely yeah you're like what you're doing is exactly what it will like you to do, which is you create that matrix, and then the topple function itself will reference that matrix, and then when you put topple into draw, all those references will remain correct. Got it. And since this is a 400 by 400 array, like maybe we should make a smaller canvas or is 400? Yeah, I do recommend that for, for yeah. the, the web editor. 
All right, so let's do maybe 100 by 100. Uh, and that gives us 10,000 cells, right? Or, yeah. Yeah, 10,000. Okay. So then for our matrix, we actually want like array or like new array of 100 elements or something. I can't remember the syntax for creating. There's different array. ways to do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah go, with, go with what you feel like doing. That's yeah. kind of the fun of fun of doing these algorithms, so yeah. And should look good. Uh, yeah, I guess we can just initialize it like the easy way. Um, yeah, so this can just be an array, and then we'll just say like uh, matrix, and then we will push on a new array of 100. Um, and then they'll be like undefined to start, but I think that's yeah, probably okay. Yeah, that's fine in JavaScript. That, yeah, you're totally right. That would that would bust um, Java's chops. They'd be pretty upset about that, but um, we'll be able to uh, coerce that type as we go. Cool. Uh, all right, so then inside of our setup, we want to find like the midpoint, right? Right. right. Which is... In a 100, it, yeah. Um, yeah. Is I, it going to be the exact middle if it's 100 by 100? It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a base zero array. <laughs> so 50 should have an equal number on both sides. OK. I was wondering when it hits the side of the screen if it's going to do it all at one frame off. Got it. Uh, and then this is going to be like width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. Uh, or I guess, yeah, it's going to be matrix at width over 2 and height over 2. Something? Yeah, yeah, that, that'll be good. Um, what What is that? Or maybe we don't actually need a midpoint there. We can just like set this equal to whatever our initial file is or something of like 100,000 things. I don't know. Like Right, right, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's that's so much easier to reason about that OK. Way. Um, and then I don't like. <laughs> Uh, I guess like if we run this, is it going to spit out down here? OK, cool. So yeah, we've got uh, 100 by 100. And then like, yes. Yeah, so in we think it should have one at, uh, yeah, 49 or 50. Is it 49 or 50? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh wait, there it is. Yeah. Uh, boom. OK, there so 50, 50, 50, we've got our, OK. So that's like our initial our initial dot, right? Like yep. in the center. OK. Yeah, our, our like incredibly tall. But extremely narrow and thin. It's it's like that thing where say you'd fold a paper all the way to the moon. It's just like yeah, that's the best way of thinking. It's just an, an impossibly tall thing. Okay, so is that all that we do in the setup? Is just like like create the first pile? Like yeah, I think you'll be all right with all those undefined. That is like the worst sounding JavaScript statement ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, yeah, but yeah, I think later. I will yeah. do it. Yeah, as so you do the topple. Um, Okay. Yeah, if you really need to, you can go in and put a bunch of zeros in there. Is that, I, I think that's how you spell topple. I'm, I'm probably it's, wrong. Well, it'll do. Topple, topple. All right. So then as part of topple, this is where the magic happens, right? We have to like, uh, so if, if I'm remembering correctly, we've got our 100,000. We want to just take four off the top, right? Yes, if it's four or greater. Okay. So... And maybe to start off, we can just topple uh, the middle one and just to like think through what happens next, right? Um, so we're gonna like take four away from some pile and this just happens to be the initial pile like right at the center. And then we wanna like increase um, stuff around it. So like, I guess there's gonna be four of these that are like plus plus. Right, where it'll be like go to the midpoint and then minus one and then go to the. I guess here we can do like, yeah, okay. Uh, hmm, 
That's pretty good. I, you're going to save a bunch of lines since you're probably never going to look at that ever again once you build it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. And then this is also a minus one. And then you've got to do like plus one. Yeah. If we're from the upper left, we're now, we're at the north western one. Okay. Minus one and minus one. Got it. And a plus one and minus one. We're now to the, yeah, the X is the first. Well, we haven't decided that, but yeah, it should be. Um, now we're on the, yeah, so the first one was just, oh, wait, no, you're going on a diagonal. Are we? Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, we're going yeah. down. Should it, be, it should just be like directly north, south, east, west. Yeah, that, that's actually easier. Um, okay. Uh yeah, because then you only have to change one direction, right? Yeah, you could do a diagonal. I mean, you have it now. <laughs> you could okay. try running it. Um, <laughs> All right. Yeah. So then, yeah. So then, I guess this would only topple. This only topples one, one down, right? Um, and if we made if we make this like ten by ten, maybe that'll help us even further reason about it. Like. Uh, yeah, that's actually probably going to save on uh, the performance as well. Okay. And then how frequently does draw run? Like, do we have to tell it? You can. You can set your frame rate and set up uh, with um, camel case frame rate as a function. That's pretty okay. useful. Uh, yeah, if you, like, set it to frame rate 10 in setup, um, you can actually do that. It's a it's a built-in function. Oh, you call, okay, you call yeah, it you just in, call instead it. of setup? Yeah, like, just set frame rate to something yeah that the browser will be a little more relaxed about i would really this has been one of the my inspirations for uh learning uh web assembly mm -hmm. is just being able to run sand piles in the browser at the like native desktop speed yeah because i just haven't been able to share the really crazy looking ones that are um not without even adding motion blur or anything like that or lighting and, and okay, so I saw that P5JS did have some WebAssembly something something. Like, is that just out of the box? Like, it lets you. I think it's just leaning on that to do make the editor work. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure that it's kind of like um, how uh, what is Figma? Figma like doesn't use WebAssembly for everything. It just uses it for the really complicated math parts, like mm -hmm. drawing vectors and things like that. Yeah. So we've got we've got an interest our first like interesting issue. So our pile is going down in the middle, but when we look at the neighbors, we've got Nan because oh because you're subtracting from under yeah, yeah of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. So uh, I guess we should maybe we should like actually try to like iterate over the whole matrix yeah. in setup or something little, or maybe just a little maybe, hygiene just a little array hygiene yeah yeah uh, okay so then. Yep, yep, yep. For like, I guess. Uh, for J. Hey, it's still it's still um, only a complexity of n if you do it in two steps. So, oh no, there now it's in squared. There it is. <laughs> so then, uh, I guess. But it's set up. It's in setup. You're not running it, so you can actually just yeah, just make it easy in the setup yep. function. Exactly. Uh, const. Or like let inner, and then in here we'll say like inner at j equals zero, open, and then push enter. Good, yeah. Let's see. All right, stop and take a look. Our middle one is going down, and then a diagonal. We've got three and three, so I think it's working now. Yeah, it's it's okay. toppling. What is it doing there? It's it's why is it going up to three? So it's incrementing. Oh, well, I paused it, but it ran a couple times. Ah, okay, good, yeah. good, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you've got it. Um, I think okay. it's running. Cool. So now for rendering, which is yeah, you got the hard part out now, which is the um, uh, yeah, algorithmic part. So this is where processing shines. Um, you can do this a couple different ways. Okay. Uh, well, the first way is to do that pixel trick where you. Mm -hmm you run on the pixels array, which represents mm -hmm. all the pixels on the screen. You'll have to do a little Majulo math or something like that to figure out where the rows are. Okay. Or you could draw a pixel 
you could run okay. through the array, um, take the figure out the x and y coordinates that that point in the uh, two dimensional array represents. Mm -hmm. So it'd be what I uh, I would probably be x, and I think your j would be y in this case, or the other way. And then use the function pixel, which is draw a pixel at x y, and you can then change the color of that pixel using um, stroke. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to do something like uh, draw matrix or something, right? Yeah. And this is going to say like, um, uh, which one do you think would be? I, I uh, it depends. You're probably, do you, well, how did you do it? That's, that's the thing you did the array where, um, that, f that first layer of your array, those are rows, right? Yeah. Good. So if that's the case, I think you should be able to use the index of, uh, like, um, as you're iterating through it, mm -hmm. you'll be able to use your index to tell it what its Y position is, and then use the index of that array within there as the um, X. And that's, that's probably going to be way, that will open it up to be a little easier to mess with. And okay. Hack and goof around with. The so pixels array in the Majulo thing, it is very old school. And it does, like, once you try to start doing that stuff and like, um, chopping it up according mm -hmm. to your width, that means you then have to have a constant for how long your rows are. And yeah. Yeah. So, like, you're, like, I guess set, like, uh, this looks like it's kind of what we're looking for, maybe, right? Like, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it, it what it's doing there is it's, um, the first number is the x position. Okay. Uh, the second one is the y, and it and you can in that case you can also it'll save you some trouble probably because you can overflow the screen and draw off the screen in case you do something that's like out of bounds. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and but now you need to take the value that's there and use that to adjust the uh, the color that color that gets put as the it. third argument to pixel. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, so if we just initially start off trying to draw a black on like I and J, uh, this is like if matrix at I, J is like greater than zero or something to start, right? Like then we should at least see like some black dots end up on the screen, maybe. It's a good sanity check. Yeah. For, for, yeah. Uh, okay, cannot. Uh, access black before initialization. Um, set. I think set needs to be... How does that work in the function? It's... So it seemed like it was just called... Mm. Just called set. Uh, but maybe black needs to be... Or like color needs to be set inside of here or something? Yeah, I'm going to look at it. I think there's actually a function just called pixel. Or maybe point. Maybe that's what it's called. It's point. Let's see. Okay. Here. Is there a way to make the, the preview bigger, or is this? Um, like it's maybe? it's going to be um, uh, no, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no okay. unless you zoom in on it. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, this is a good check, though. Okay, and we're yeah. All right. I don't know. Like right. the anti-aliasing oh, yeah. is going to make it look really smooth. Got it. That's good. Okay, so console um, setting. I J black. Okay, so yeah, I looked it up. Um, pixel and set is doing something slightly different. It's it's it okay. is actually accessing the pixel at the location. I think you'll get a, a clearer result if you use the point function. Point. Point is a function that takes two arguments. It's your x and your y, and it takes the stroke that you've defined prior to calling it to decide the color. Okay. So that's um, that Got seems it. a lot easier. Okay, so we want to say something like stroke, stroke purple, sure. Yeah, you want to call that stroke at the beginning. Okay. Um, do do we need to call it like or like clear it out or anything after we? No, that looks good. No? Yeah. Okay. Huh. Uh, I think. 
Maybe it needs to be inside there. Let's see. Awfully close. Yeah, a lot of things in processing uh, work globally like that, especially when it comes to rendering. Got it. Okay. Uh, where did we go? Here. The stroke weight. I, yeah, I'm hoping. Oh, that's an issue. Here, but... uh, yeah, that's got to be one <laughs> because we're, we're just drawing a pixel. Got it. And it does not seem like it's showing up on here. Um, mm. Do we need to call update pixels or no, we should be able to just call. Hmm. Oh, wait, background is being written on top. Oh, so yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I yeah, get background out of draw. That's a, okay. that's a classic processing uh, optimization. It, like all of the boilerplate always starts with it in draw, but that means you're repainting the background. And uh, we can do that later. Well, that kind uh, of you want to do that in right? setup. Oh, in setup. Okay. Yeah. yeah and do it in setup. Figure out like where you're allowed to call certain functions. That that is um, kind of its yeah. its Java lineage. Got it. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's it's not a terrible thing, but yeah. Yeah. So, in order to create um, animation, we'll then call mm -hmm. background at the beginning, and then we'll update because that that array we have is like a full global state of our of what we want to render. We're not like saving the stuff that we already did and then adding more. So in that case, once we get our colors figured out, then you can put background back into draw. I see. OK. Uh, all right. So like, because we would be uh, resetting it here or something, or? Uh, you can just do it at the top of draw. Like, OK. Basically, the first thing you do is repaint the screen. Um, yeah, like like a sort of a typical game engine thing. I shouldn't have told you to take it out right away since I think I think it's working. Yeah, okay. All right. So that that does seem to work. Okay, so now like our topple yeah. to get this like going, right? We want to make the topple actually like topple not just the middle pile. So <laughs> Yeah, you now have to iterate that. Uh, so every frame we have to run through our entire array and then do that guard clause, ask if the value is Higher than four, okay, or four or higher. Mm -hmm. And if if that uh, guard clause doesn't get checked, then we run topple on that item of the array. Okay, all right. So um, so I'm thinking maybe we can refactor topple to take in like an x and y or something or like a row that and a column. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So maybe like. Uh, X and Y or something, and then here, right? We can do destructured assignment in there, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Okay, and then here we can just use okay. this as X and this is Y, and all of these become X X uh, X. And then this becomes Y. I know all this clicking must be really painful for you. <laughs> Is there a bin mode on this? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, geez. Uh, yeah. Anytime I like move to a web editor or like any of these things, it always throws me off. All right. Yeah. So then inside of, I guess we could make this one like topple, uh, like a single pile, and then we can make another function called topple. Which like iterates over the whole matrix. Yeah, that's that's pretty clean. That's easy to because yeah, the more um, we isolate these functions, the 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 more we can break them later. That sounds good. Cool. Like that. Um, so then, in order to figure out which ones we need to topple, what you were suggesting was like we uh, as we're iterating over the matrix, we figure out like. Um, we're going to pass i and j as like the position to topple, but only if matrix at i and matrix at j is greater than, or like, what, what, what did you call it? Like max? Uh, I called it, then? yeah, to be more descriptive, I guess we'd call it max height. Or actually, that's confusing because of height. Um, like topple height, maybe, or something? Depth, maybe. Uh, yeah, it's, okay. it's, the, it's a hard coded value because the whole thing breaks if the number of 
grains that we topple is like not equal to the maximum that we choose to do it at. Um, so like it'll just stop right away if you just topple too too quickly. Okay. It'll just topple to the sides and then they'll say, hey, I haven't reached my threshold, so I'm just going to sit still. So okay. we've chosen four. Um, like if we wanted to do five, you could actually do north, south, east, west, and northwest. Like then you'd have five grains of sand to topple from. Okay. So it looks like it is doing something. It's so hard uh, to see because it's, it's super hard to see. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh yeah, y'all can't see. I think it's time to kick up our numbers. I think you can kick yeah. up to a hundred by hundred again. A hundred and hundred. Yeah. Okay. And then maybe nice. can we make our point um our point size? bigger like set this to 10 and let's see if we get it like okay okay it's just a blob now okay yeah yeah well the problem there is uh 10 it's still drawing in that little like 10 by 10 space but then it's making yeah. gigantic strokes so yeah. you'd have to multiply by a scale across where you're going i think if if you make it 100 by 100 mm -hmm. and basically run it the same way uh where you're still going to calculate by pixel okay that's uh it takes a little bit longer and if you want to cheat you could like call topple 10 times every frame to speed it up that's a got it but it's yeah, going okay. it's definitely going uh <laughs> so two bros youtube says would it be faster to only render one quarter of the array and then rotate 90 degrees the pile would have to be centered. I can't figure out if that actually optimizes anything. That's super interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's an uh, interesting solution. I think that would totally work, right? Because like every right now everything is symmetrical. But the, I think the fun thing about having yeah. it not be or not not rotating it is that later on I think we can grow in like weird ways that go in like different directions and things. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I could I could pull up more on mine. I love that suggestion actually. That's um because this will naturally be a symmetrical uh problem that arises that's uh very practical but since we're in like renegade mode right now yeah we keep on thinking ahead to how we're gonna <laughs> destroy it yeah um the trick that i would suggest there is to uh, um, topple a bunch of times every frame so okay you can run a loop inside a draw and just run topple 10 times okay um this wait, is fun I don't, this is like... I don't understand that part hold on <laughs> yeah yeah so um, you're going to recalculate 10 times. The calculation happens so fast, it's the rendering that takes forever. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, uh, oh, my gosh. Like, I don't know why. Four loops everywhere. <laughs> well, yeah, welcome. It's, it's kind of yeah. cool to go back to procedural stuff. Like, I use yeah. uh, functional. I, I can see this being done functionally, but um, it'd be kind of hard to reason about at this speed yeah there you go that's super cool okay so now you need to grade the color by the height of the pile yes let's do that sounds like fun uh i keep like wanting to zoom in i wonder if there's a way to zoom uh from Streamyard. no all right whatever uh no 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 <laughs> okay so okay so now we want to grade or we want to we want to change the color based on how tall the pile is right yeah um, okay while you're working on that i will see if there's a way to if there's just like some built-in function to scale the screen okay so then maybe we have like one is purple uh two is red three is blue four is yellow or i don't know whatever all right <laughs> And then we can do like colors. And there we go. That's starting to look like some some then, JavaScript now. We've got yeah. an object finally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Colors at uh, uh, no at a matrix of i and j. That'll give us like the value of i and j. Then we reach into this object. We get out. Actually, this could just be like an array, right? With uh, yeah. undefined and, uh, or no, I guess maybe we want that to be the background color. 
honestly, uh, these days, I I don't think you can use it inside there. I would love to use a map. I love the JavaScript map function for these things. Okay. It avoids so many problems. But if you're doing an object, yeah, it'll go. Uh, it's, yeah, and you've used one, two, three, four to make it. Yeah, should be yeah, good. Actually, yeah, zero, zero is a value there. Yeah, but yeah, so zero is going to be like in the array, right? Black. So, zero black is good for zero because it gives you the impression okay. of an unaltered sand pile. Got it. OK. OK. And uh, let's see how it looks. Ooh. Uh, something crashed. All right. Call from draw, draw matrix, blah, blah, blah. Not a valid color representation. OK. Uh, so but, yeah, what is the value? Um, oh, you know what? I bet it's for like the hundred thousand one, or something. Probably, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, also, we only have to set the stroke if it's greater than zero. Nice, or, yeah. That's a that's a shave off a bunch of function calls there. Yeah, and then, um, but and then we can do like and uh, matrix at i. And J is less than max, or like less than or equal to depth, because we don't want it to do it for the center one. Hey. Oh, super cool! Nice, it's like flashing all kinds of crazy colors. Ah, oh, so trippy. I love it. Cool. Yeah, you've got a good one going. It's it's bouncing back and forth. I find that it does that uh, usually on these. I think it has something to do with that matter of what's in the center. Yeah, like, cause it's also, I guess, like when you're toppling something, like, if you topple a pile and then some of that topples back, right? Yeah, like yeah, when you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's uh, a, there's a trick. There's a trick to I can't remember. Is there some trick to preventing that exact behavior? But this is very neat because now you're still you've got that um like feedback loop going, where yeah. it weighs back. So if you Topple a few less times per draw. Let's see. Let's see what we can. Maybe cut it in half here. Okay. The other idea that I had was like, what if we, um, when we're increasing these, we can we only increase them if they are less than depth or something. Like I think that would cause it to just go out in all directions. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you're the other thing is that we we don't have any bounds right now. So like I think it's toppling potentially outside of it will or something. Um, oh, no. Yeah, you have oh. a bunch of zeros and and I guess you're not going through yeah, you're only going through the points in the array that are gonna topple. And that's why we're not getting all of our black void space. Yeah. Okay. So um, maybe that guard clause is a little too conservative, but it's pretty helpful considering we're running this in the browser. Yeah. The other thing, I wonder if we can move this down here too. So that's only going once. Ooh, it's getting better. It's getting faster. Uh, run stroke weight in the up in the setup. Okay. Uh, yeah. Stroke weight. Okay, cool. Like generally when you're building visualizations like this, like how do you think about what goes in setup versus what goes in draw? Uh, it's, I mean, it's classic like immutable versus mutable state. Um, but because hacking is so much more fun, things migrate in between the two. Draw should be pretty lean because it's just, it has to, like rendering is very intensive yeah. in the way that it, it draws its things. It's, it's the rendering that really hurts performance. Got it. Like it's, it's running JavaScript, I think pretty much just in the way using the same engine that's always used. So it does the calculation very quickly. Got it, got it, got it. OK. Trying to move as much as we can up and out uh, Nice. so that it moves faster. Ooh, nice. Oh, cool. It's very so, good. It's so fast. Nice. I love it. Yeah. yeah, you're getting that 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 waving. But you know that's just another version of the sand pile. Is, uh, having it emerge from the center is, is, yeah. is mathematically kind of like where it comes from. But now you can start doing, like playing with the color and making the colors a little bit more subtle and actually having them sort of feel like representations yeah. is a tr nice trick. Um, if you use hue, saturation, lightness, and use yeah. HSL for, as your color mode, yeah. that would make that really easy. Okay. 
So like not RGB, but uh, HSL, where's that? Um, you do that in setup. You can, you can define HSL as your color mode. Got it. It's a, it's a built-in constant. So yeah, color mode, camel case in the setup function. And you pass it the argument of uh, HSL as uh, a global constant, so no, no quotes. OK. It's actually a variable. And then let's, let me double check. Oh, no, it's, it's in this one, it's, it's hue, hue, saturation, brightness, so HSB. Okay. okay. And um, then the second argument is your range. So 100 is a good number for that. OK. Uh, and then for, for the actual colors here, when we have that set, we can just call call color like this, and then it'll use like H, S, and L for the. Yeah, yeah. Then you can do like say you want it all to be monochromatic and just be different mm -hmm. shades of green. So like dark green would be very tall, and light green would be not tall. Yeah. Then you just set up, and you say every one of those colors is just a little bit darker. So the the brightness would come down like 100, 90, 80, 70, 60. Cool. Awesome. All right. Come there, yeah, on. that's that's definitely a way, way easier than going through RGB and setting those up. Okay. Let's see what happens. Wop. Uh, There's an error to color being defined in the current scope. Ah, okay. So oh, then yeah. <laughs> let <laughs> colors uh, no. Oh yeah, that's actually a good. That's just a good, good way to keep it in, be readable. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Yes. It's yes. Beautiful. Look at that. Yeah. That's so neat. It looks like a firework or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Cool. Yeah, you got it working. Um. If you want to, you could take one more step to to see how big you could make your your canvas before it starts to really hurt. OK. I think that might be a good thing to do. Is it all just going to read off of that? I think it might. Here it good. goes. <laughs> yeah. So um, for being able to see this better, if anyone's uh, going along, um, once I reach this point where, where the thing's running and it's going well, the if you have a really powerful language at your disposal, say you're doing this in like a game engine, and, and you're not worrying so much as we are about the constraints, then you can start uh, scaling your pix your your actual sand piles, say making them 10 pixels wide, and then scaling your grid to be where each one is 10 pixels apart. That's that can help with this a lot. But in our case, we can just topple really quickly and jump ahead. Maybe we can increase our frame rate now, too, since you got it running smoothly. OK. I was trying to increase the stroke rate again, but let's see. Uh, 30, 30 mm. FPS, right? That's OK. Let's be chugging along. Yeah. So the, the thing that I was trying to mess around with was how far, we're, how far we are. Oh, you know what? OK, so I did that wrong. So what I wanted to do was. So like the topple distance, I guess I was trying to make it so that like instead of just going to the the, the direct neighbors, go like further out. Oh, your dots. That is like that is kind of the weird abstraction with this, right? Yeah, it's 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 where when you have a pile of sand on a beach, it it rolls down the sides. It doesn't just like doop doop straight yeah, exactly. in a, in a very discreet way. Yeah. So like if we made the topple distance also four, and then we change all of these to topple distance. Nice, yeah. And then run it. Let's yeah, getting all those oh, magic numbers cool. out of there. Look at that. OK, so it's spreading pretty far. I want to oh. try to like, Oh, yeah. now if you, oh, now you can yeah. draw rectangles instead of points. I bet right. You could. Yeah. yeah, or yeah, we can make the stroke weight 10 or something. Uh, that is really clean, yeah. Oh, huh. that did not work as expected. It doesn't seem like points taking the stroke weight. Yeah. It was when you got that muddy effect a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, is stroke is stroke like resetting the stroke weight when I call stroke? I don't think so. I, I think it I think it takes that. Okay. Yeah. Stroke, stroke weight. Okay. Huh. 
Yeah, huh. the, the only argument to stroke is color. Got it. Um, okay, and then point. Yeah, maybe point is the one. Uh, let's see. Is there like another thing we could do with point in terms of, oh no, stroke weight 10, and it's supposed to make bigger dots, right? Make the points it's supposed to. They would be circular. Mm -hmm. um, so you get kind of a an interesting effect out of that. And it should be, I don't see any reason why that shouldn't be a, taking that stroke way that you've defined and set up. Yeah. Maybe try throwing it in draw, see if it works. Okay. Let's see. Oh, nice. It worked. Okay, <laughs> this is so cool. I don't know why. I don't know why it didn't take it in yeah. setup, but hey, there you go. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's so crazy. Yeah, that's cool. That's like a... If you say had a LED matrix at home, this would be yeah. so rad. <laughs> if yes. you could put that up on your wall. Yes. Okay. So what I want to try now is like mm. we've got our topple distance, and yeah, we're going uniformly out in that direction. But yeah, let's see. So, hmm. I was trying yeah, to think about you're like, jumping. Your 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 dots are jumping. That's that's the effect you're getting now. Um, you could change. You can maybe make the colors a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Dramatic because yeah, it is kind of cool. hard to see right now. Yeah. Maybe like changing that hue, as well as the brightness. Let's see. It's huh. a muddy color. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe maybe going up because yeah you're you're flying into the red range. Three, oh, go go up. You said? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, uh, 40, 30, 20. If anyone's playing around with this and they have some some cool color combinations, that's that's like a nice nice thing to throw out there. Yeah, Probably we are in that. HSL mode, so. Right. Okay. I guess. HSP. What if we make this? Are these? They're, I'm assuming they're between. I think. Did you did you pass one hundred as a second argument to color mode? Um, I did. Oh, so that's like the max. That's the range. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So then, yeah. Okay. So we can make all of these hundred and then we can make, uh, this, if this is 100, that should be black or white or something. Uh, no, it's a, a rotation oh. around the color wheel. Got it. Got it. Got it. So got it. yeah, 100, you're at red. If you, if you go like 180 degrees away from that, you'll be at really G biv. <laughs> Got it. See. Ooh, there we nice. go. Cool. Yeah. Gosh, it's so trippy. Okay, so then, I, yeah, I really want to try to figure out how to make it so that it doesn't come back up the hill, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think we want to do something like, if the value that's already at this location is, um, is uh zero or like do we only want to increase it if it's yeah i see um, what you're doing yeah yeah um so when we decide i think you have to do this for every spread like for every directional spread which man that's a lot of i think you're out Yeah, because the that that is that is tricky the way we're doing it because the um the agent like the it, it's mutating the state directly of its neighbor. Yeah, like we're not doing this with objects, so the neighbor isn't like taking a receive pile method. If we were doing that, it'd be it would just be simple as dirt. It would just be like if I am greater than four, don't pile me. Right. I think yeah, we can do that just from the math, like. It shouldn't happen. Wait. Like, okay. So okay. So we're only incrementing if the if it's less than or equal to the depth. And oh, you know what? No, I copied and pasted, wait. but I didn't. Yeah, I didn't update my signs here. That's important. And then these should both be pluses. Okay. Dude, this is I. Gosh, I had to think through that in like OOP sort of thinking, and you did that in like the most visual basic way ever. That's awesome. Like I would have just been sitting there like 
fuming over this. That's great. <laughs> it's patterns. All of these are just patterns. <laughs> it's good. That's good. Uh, okay. So then, yeah, it's interesting, right? How it grows. Okay. Uh, cool. So then maybe we should... that's right. Yeah. It, it's, it's searching on the outside edge and it takes a little while for it to move out from the engine and it, and it propagates through and then it hits the edge and it puts one more on the edge. Yes. Okay. I like it. I like it. Uh, and then, um, the other thing that we can get crazy with is for topple distance. Um, like we could define topple distance inside of here as like, let topple distance equal ceiling of math. Or is it, what is it again? Random? It's just like random. Oh yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Is, uh, um, so yeah, ran, this, this is a built-in a processing function that behaves just like math.random in okay. JavaScript. Got it. So then, there we go. This is, that's more like nature right there. Nice. Yeah. 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 We're getting some like spore, some sporulation. Yeah. And oh, then, no, that's not right. <laughs> some other word. <laughs> what is it random or like <laughs> different for every direction now, right? Like, I mean, this is probably adding a lot of expensive stuff, but whatever. It's, oh, yeah. you, you've been keeping up pretty well. Like, uh, working in that 100 by 100 area, it's been good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then it almost feels like we need to go further than two, like maybe four to eight or something because, um, because the size of our dot is now three. So we need like at least some gap between them or something. Oh gosh. It's so cool. <laughs> That's neat. Yeah. You got those diagonals that form so quickly. Yeah. It's so it seems like, it, it, is your is like four green? Is green very high? Is it? A um, let's see for the bio? color. I don't know. Okay, so this is zero. Zero, one, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah, we should really should have used. This is the only problem I have with HSL in this case. Like, I love the way CSS does HSL because the um, the hue value is three sixty. Yeah, the range is three sixty, so it's actually like a logical color wheel. Setting it to 100, I, d I have no idea anymore. I don't have a mental map for where purple is between 0 and 100. Right. Yeah. What if we, yeah, let's go back to just RGB. Yeah. Um, and see, is this going to, this will just work, right? Because they're just, yeah. Okay. They're just all green. Uh, okay. So then if we do, actually, instead of using colors directly, we could like calculate the color here. Right, like instead of having like a fixed thing, we could use the depth as like a input into some color thing, like uh, point color, and it takes like the value, and then we return like color, and it's RGB, so it'll be like value times something. I don't know. Uh, 50 value times 50 value times 50. And then uh, here we can say stroke of like point color of matrix at I and J. Um, but I, I don't know like when it's generating these, oh wow, look at that. It's just like different colors of gray. Uh, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> and Okay, so if the height, maybe we just fix one of these. Are no. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out how to get like a gradient, and also like maybe change the change the depth so that like you have to. You can have like taller piles or something. What do you think? Oh. Okay, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> I was, I, I've been watching you this whole time and I've just been ghosting. Um, okay. and my internet came in and out, but, um, oh, no worries, no worries. Yeah. What do we got here? Uh, color mm -hmm. value, value tensor. So, so the problem is that you're, yeah. Um, with RGB, if your R, G and B are all equal, it will be a shade of gray. Got it. So, uh, one trick for that would be to set a constant for R, G or B, whichever one you want to be the base color. 
Okay. Yeah, let's say. Yeah, there you go. That, that's all blue, or what do you think? Is this that'll do some it's fun like, stuff. It's like looking at a regex, I have no idea what's going. <laughs> good, uh, neat. Those are good colors. Purples and blues and the light blue. I like it. Yeah. So Two Bros YouTube says probably out of scope, but would it be faster to initialize a circular two D array and then only calculate the inner ring and push the inner values into an outer array, outer array instead? I'm not sure I understand. I think I get it. Um, but it would be faster to initialize a circular 2D array. So a circular 2D array would be um, one with variable length to the rows. Um, hmm. Maybe this is just me like basing this off of a strictly typed view of it, but um, a circular array is like, makes my brain hurt. I yeah. think I understand it though. Um, so the yeah. Other... Oh, oh, I see. And he's got two two of them. So you have like a staging array that would be circular. That'd be only looking at the things that are only looking at the piles that are capable of toppling, mm. and then um, pushing the values of that staging array to uh, your you actually rendered array. Got it. Okay. Yeah. In some languages, that would definitely be fat, especially like a. a if you're in Go or C++, that would definitely be faster. But Yeah. OK, so the other thing that I'm noticing is that uh, we are only going, like, it's not growing beyond this square right here. Like, I was expecting it to grow all the way to the edges. But mm. it seems like we're never getting that far. And I'm wondering. Uh, well, there is the, the, that might have to do with the weirdness of uh, why it's not toppling symmetrically up and down and outward. I, I've seen this before when I built this. It's in there somewhere. At some, like for some reason, it's, it's, uh, I think this actually happened in Daniel Schiffman's version of this where he had it doing that wobbly left and right thing. Huh. Okay. I think if you can, if you can, hey, what did you just do? I, I removed the randomness from the topple distance so that we can see like if it just keeps pegging at like. Well, you some... just fixed that, and you magically fixed the symmetry issue. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's almost like it's not, uh, like when we're iterating right here or something, it's not actually going beyond a hundred. So but, um, yeah, I get the feeling that that two bros would probably be feeling this um, because it's been getting. Oh, I can see. Oh, yeah, I, I can see the, like his thinking or her thinking, um, in terms of how this circle is sort of the active space where all the mutation is happening and all the important calculations happening. Yeah. Totally. And the the way this math works though is that it takes, it's like a, um, it, it gets more difficult for or or yeah, it takes longer for a single pile of sand to propagate to the outer edge of the circle as it progresses because the number of piles it has to pass through. Oh, so, so that's why I iterate on the topple Got function it. in draw in order just to kind of, you know, see some action. Okay. You can let's, sit here and let yeah. like let's topple it even faster. I see what you're saying. I totally see what you're saying. Cause it's not like in order for us to like, as soon as we hit a certain range, in order for the pile that's on the very edge to 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 topple, to push. it yeah, needs it to has get to... sand from the center. Yeah, like all yeah. the way out. And it looks Whoa, like oh, hey, you're getting some great symmetries now, but I love it. Frozen? <laughs> uh, I think you ran out of sand. Oh, what? No way. Okay, yeah. epic, yeah. epic, epic. Maybe <laughs> that was it. Maybe that was it. We were running out of sand by the edge. Right? Oh yeah, let's do ten million. What is that? Ten million? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, what is Shouldn't this? Shouldn't be an issue. <laughs> I think I saw that in, in JavaScript, in like a new version of JavaScript, they're going to have this thing that we have in Ruby. Yeah, I saw it. Um, yeah, you're, yeah, it's. OK. Yeah, it does look. So you can kind of see the like almost tan. There's like circles that are sort of tan that are mm -hmm. like kind of. Are those high brightness? There's like the 80 or the 90? Yeah, it seems like those are the ones that are kind of like starting in the middle and working their way out. And then, <clears throat> yeah. 
So then this one's blue and we're okay. So there we go. There we go. Yeah. So it should keep going. It should keep going. You've made a good sand pile. Don't I stop. Love, I love the, the spacing of the dots and the strip weight. It, oh, it, it's fun. It gives that LED array effect to it that makes it just kind of easier easier to to intuit and feel. Yeah, okay. it's cool. So okay, so let's let's just try messing around with this uh yeah. yeah. The speed or something like try to make it Okay, here's one. Um yeah. so uh processing has a very useful um global variable that is a not not a constant mm -hmm. and it's the frame count okay so it's just a, typical of a game engine or a, or an animation engine um, it's counting every tick and that inter increments every single time uh, a frame passes so you could change any number that you're using to calculate your topple array by making some kind of calculation on the frame count. Now frame count goes up really fast in sort of the integer range we're working in. So you might wanna multiply it by a very small number. But what I like to do is in that, uh, like, like you saw where I passed the maximum number into topple. Yeah. If you don't just pass a random number every frame, but you mm -hmm. pass a sign of the frame count, Mm. Then so you will like, get an oscillating change in how how tall it can get before it topples. Okay. So it the at the very beginning and and once again sign on frame count is going to change really fast. So uh, I usually create a smaller or slower sign function in draw. Mm -hmm. That would be like I, like 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 a smaller change or like slow sign, which is the sign of frame count times a very small uh, float. Okay, so the sign. Okay, so frame count. Yeah, that's that's is, where that's the one to start with. Okay, so, so frame yeah, count, perfect. which is like a global thing. Okay, and then you're saying take the sign of that. Yeah, and then you get oscillation. Okay, so frame count is a nice linear uh, increasing number, and if you slap, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I didn't like that. <laughs> oh, maybe seal or something. I think so. Are you what? <laughs> it 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 broke it very quickly. Um, maybe it doesn't want to take zero. Well, okay. So I passed depth. Yeah. Okay. So depth. I passed depth here, but topple pile also needs to take in depth, I guess. Mm. And this can take in depth. Yeah. There it is. The yeah. Oh man, that shows up a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, you're already you already set up for that. Nice. And so for now, if we just say, yeah, let's six. let's bring her back to basics. Yeah. So then, if we do like sign, or maybe what if we just did frame count? Yeah, that'll be weird, right? Oh, it's gonna get so yeah. <laughs> After like five frames, it's gonna lose its mind. Cannot read property of undefined reading 192 on 56. What is this? Hmm. I think you're out of, way out of bounds of your array, maybe. But that's normally not an issue in JavaScript. Yeah. Oh, OK. So we're out of bounds on the first side and then not anywhere near the second side, I think. OK. Can you go above even four with the way it's currently set up? Oh, yeah. Let's try it. Let's try that. So then. If we just say 10 or something, right? Like that works. Works. 100. Yeah, frame count. OK. I think it said the value is like 156. OK. So but either, like way, either way, either system. way, if we, uh, yeah, if we do like sign, is, Oh, maybe it's because it's a negative number, because sign goes between 1 and negative 1. Got it. OK. So. Oh, got yeah, it, that got makes it, no got sense. It, got it, got it, got it, yeah, okay. yeah. How can you calculate it at a depth of negative? Right. That, so I think that's yeah. Is abs? Is that a thing? Let's see. Now it's going to be, yeah, yeah, sawtooth wave. Okay, so then now we just multiply this yeah. by. Yeah, there you uh, go. Ten or something. Um, you want to make it very small. Okay. Um. Oh, I love this chaining. This is like, yeah, this is good. Okay. Uh, 
There it is. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was born into this world. Yeah. In pain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, um, wait, hold on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We weren't actually using that for topple. Let's see. So let's actually use it here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, oof. Oh, uh, yeah. I got hit with that again. So, yeah. so what's happening here is that you're, you're rounding an absolute of a sign. So zero is still going to get in there. Yep. Well, no ceiling. It's going to start at one. It's just going to do a lot of ones. Make that. Um... Oh, whoa. Did you see yeah. what it did? Yeah. <laughs> so this, yeah. It's going so fast. Yeah. And, and also, I don't think we should be toppling 50 times every frame while we're doing this. Okay. Okay. Because you're also running that. Yeah. 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 All right. So what do we get with this? Three, uh, two, like, three. Does two, it have a default two, value three. for that depth in the topple function? It does. Or no, it doesn't. Uh, I don't know how that's working, but <laughs> uh, okay. There so we're go. back to we're back to normal. But if we put depth back in here, you variable shadowing uh, times. Okay, so that seems like I think it's going to here. Plus two or something, yeah. yeah. Here we go. Um, the big one. That's yeah. yeah. There you go. Whoa! There you go. It's a tr okay. Whoa! This is like <laughs> a trip because it's yeah. It's a uh, like on the right side. Yeah. Um, that definitely has to do with the ceiling function. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yes, you're totally right. Okay, so then what if we? Uh. Uh, um, to, to get this to evolve a little bit more slowly, that five that you're using, that magic five, yeah. if you make that 0 0.05, that will then slow the rate of our sine wave. The frequency of our sine wave will decrease. This one? The amplitude will, yeah, the amplitude will remain the same of going between what we have like two and four, I think. But, um, the thing that you multiply by the sine wave is what makes the sine wave longer. There you go. Now you have smoother animation. Whoa, that's crazy. And make that smaller and smaller. It, like typically for things that are running at the speed of like 10 frames per second. Yeah. Whoa. So cool. Why does this keep getting, okay, so it keeps getting yeah. to 192 and yeah. bailing out. Like is, uh, yeah, yeah, there it is. On line fifty six. Like, why isn't our matrix? Why isn't our matrix four hundred right here? So it'd be four hundred by four hundred. Uh, this should end up being four hundred. This should end up being four hundred. Um, yeah, it shouldn't yeah. be able to calculate. I mean, it is. I think when it gets to the edge, it tries to find. I think you have to subtract. This is like, oh, I think you're in the, uh, I forget what it's called, the, the N plus one issue for your for loops. Okay. Where um, you're, when you get to the edge, it's looking to one pixel to the right of the array. Like, so it gets to the edge of the row, and the row is only 100 long, and it asks for position 101. Got it. Yep. So if you just subtract one off of your uh, your your end clause inside of your for loop, I think that'll go away. Uh, like all of these need minus one, right? Um, just in the for loop. Uh, when you're selecting which, oh wait, I see what you mean. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh, or like, I guess the other way we could do it is like, um, for all of these, do like modulo. Uh, width or something or like I guess yeah it needs to be between uh oh man your 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 super VB code is hurting <laughs> now Dang. Right, so I, then, oh, let's say like a bummer. Yeah. if x is zero or y is zero or x is width 
Nice. Or y is height and just return. I like that. That should cut off the limb. Yeah. <laughs> when it happens. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, gosh, it's so cool. Oh, yeah, it's calling that a lot. We got to figure out that seal situation because it's yeah, like how do we how do we go out uniformly? <laughs> well, uh, I think it's fair to say that um, your your three nested function calls uh, might be causing our brains a little. Oh, it did it again! <laughs> Darn. Okay, okay, yeah. So, who knows? Uh, Mystery bug for the totally. for the viewer. <laughs> yeah, why one ninety two is such a weird number. It, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, hmm. so instead of seal, what if we use like a uh, parsint or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or, you don't necessarily. I mean, you can use round. Is that, is that a thing? A round. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, uh, I believe it has a round. Nice. Okay. Perfect. I forget. Does, does JS have a math dot round? I think it might. Uh, I uh, wonder because I, I then I have if it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's in it's in the standard JavaScript. So this should be greater than fifty. Whoa! Ooh. It's still. It's like I bet you, um, like point five one 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 is yeah. is screwing that up. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for joining, too, Brett. Uh, yeah. Have a good rest of your weekend. And, yeah. Yeah. Appreciate. Uh, yeah. I always love hearing people's ideas on this one. That was an interesting, totally. interesting view. Yeah. Cool, man. Why don't we leave it at that? I think that's like people are well equipped. They can go and build their own yeah. sand pile visualization. And here, uh, I'll share. Let me pull up one more. Since yeah, go for it. Since we, go uh, I'm gonna dig around there. I think I think I remembered where the, or some of my favorite ones. When we'll go to like version 11 here. Of goo. Yeah, there we Share go. Your screen again. Yeah, I'll get my screen on there, and and so if you are running on a local machine and you have all that freedom, uh, show just another another type of phenomenon that can happen when you're doing these. Okay, there we go. It's running. Oh, there we go. So this is one where I've seeded it and I've applied sort of a magic eye effect. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's has like random sized piles all over the screen. And then they come in and they converge towards the center. But because there's all this pattern that's already there for it to emerge from, it'll... Uh, It'll it won't be symmetrical. It'll just be a brand new thing. Like this, there's just there's just infinite. One more. Let's see if I can find one more. That okay. one is like too chaotic and insane. Cool. I think I'm gonna there's... pop off screen for just a sec. Yeah. Show your yeah, do your do your thing. Okay. All right, we'll do one more. Should have labeled these, but oh, that was pretty similar. One. Either way, that's I think that's good. I think uh, I think CJ's gone, so I'm just gonna stay on stay on this and keep on digging around until we find one that. Shows a little bit more of a geometrical effect. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think this one will be good. Is it working. Here we go. Yeah, this is taking a little while to check along, but this is a good, this is a good. Finally, this is showing what can happens if the corners are seated. Nice. At the beginning. When those hit the middle, I think it's going to start flipping out. There we go. 
it looks like the screen share too popped off. Do you want to share again? Oh, oh no. Oh no, yeah. it's doing cool stuff. We would never want that. Let's see the cool this stuff. This is a good this is good. This is kind of the type of thing I was looking for where it's a little easier to read visually what's going on because there's so much math happening. Okay. Okay, here we go. So the contrast between these colors is really low, but as long as you are seeing some of the screen sharing, are you seeing that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That looks cool. So uh, after this has been running for a minute, there's uh, just kind of fuzz happening at the outer edges, uh -huh. which is just very interesting. This is definitely from a sine wave being affected on a, on a uh, topple function. And the center just it just starts creating shapes that feel like it's it's drawing like geometry. Yeah. But it's yeah. not. It's all being generated from each pixel just talking to each other. Hmm. Neat. All right. Super cool. Yep. All right. Well. Awesome. That was fun. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for hanging out, Kevin. This is uh this is super cool. I know that like. Uh, there's a few other things that we could build with p5.js just like show people like uh, the, yeah it, it seems like you know it really really well like all the different apis and stuff to call so yeah uh, projects with it it's it's a pretty neat program what they've what they've built is not meant to be very uh, it, it, i've actually built industrial software using processing okay uh, by running the Java version of it on a Raspberry Pi. Nice. So it has that potential where it, it's very extensible and it's and it's been around long enough that people have all these things built for it. But uh, it, at the same time, it's it's definitely its strength is being able to really quickly prototype things out and see a visual representation of them. Yep. That's so much more valuable. Totally. Totally. Yeah, it's super fun to play with. So yeah, if you're watching, uh, if you're watching later and you build something with processing or P5.js, drop a link down in the description, and we would love to check it out and play around. And uh, yeah, if you have any ideas for future visualization videos or something that you think are would be fun to see, let us know. And yeah, thanks so much for your time and attention. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, until next time. Cheers. Kevin, actually, yeah, is there anywhere online that you wanted to plug or people like way, ways that people could find you? You could always find me. I'm I'm uh, Morbius underscore punk on GitHub. Um, <laughs> if you need your thing to show through a link. Yeah, and, okay. Uh, yeah, we'll, drop yeah, link I'll, put that up and I'll, I'll put up some of the sketches that I have in uh, my P5.js account as well. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks again. I hope everyone has a great weekend. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Cheers.